Hi there everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here, another episode of Magic Jewels. So for today's episode, it's the second and last gameplay episode with the uh, Simic Tempo deck. So we're going to try and play out the lum Lumbering Falls here, if the uh, game will allow. For the first game of the day, we're playing the Rank 22 Dav. See how this goes. So next turn is going to be Under City Troll, then I don't know what we're going to play, maybe Wild Size turn 3 if we don't find anything else, but see how it goes. So it's played red, so we could be playing Thoptus here, which could, you know, really upset me, but excellent. We found a Frost Link, so that's good. Got a bit of lag going on here, which is kind of annoying. I don't know if it's his end or my end, but we have got the lag going on. So he's going to play out the, uh, the good old Undercity Troll. I am guessing he's going to burn it, which would really upset me. Yep, he's going to fire and pulse it. Of course he is. Why wouldn't he burn an Undercity Troll? Oh yes, because it really annoys me. So let's see what uh, Dav plays this turn. We do have the Frost Inks to play out now, so... Yeah, it would have been nice if Undercity Troll could have stuck around a bit longer. Okay, so we've got Red Green here. So maybe we don't want to play out Frost Inks this turn then. Uh, we'll play out maybe a Hinterland Harbour. Oops, Daisy. Don't play out the Frost Links. Don't. Oh my god. Stupid lag. It basically clicked for me when I didn't want it to. I was going to hold open my land and make him think I had like a counter or something, but no. It plays out the Frost Links and completely wastes its tap ability. <sighs> Deeply frustrated there. Yeah, the lag really screwed me over there because I did not want to play Frost Links. I was maybe just going to play out Lumbering Falls next turn just because. Um, it it becomes like a 3-3 elemental creature. Okay, so he hasn't played out anything else, which is good for us. So let's just make sure we're not clicking on too many things here. Is that 4 mana? Um, so why is this suddenly zoomed in? Why is that tapped? Oh, because it's 4 mana. Of course it is. My god, I am going full retard right now. I thought this was 3... Come on! What the hell is going on here? Um, excuse me? I... Oh my god, this lag. Seriously? Why is he wild sizing? Is he trying to draw a card just by wild sizing my frost links? I don't believe that. That just like completely skipped over my attack phase with the frost links. So I'm guessing he didn't find any mana there, so he is now mana screwed. Which is kind of good for us. So let's try and play the island out this turn, and then we'll try and play the lumbering falls this turn. There we go. Now I can attack with it. Yeah, this lag is horrendous. So we'll just make sure we're only clicking once on certain things. Attack with all. Confirm attack. We're just going to take our time. We don't do anything too hasty. We're just going to make sure that we actually win this game. There we go. We actually, did, we actually did five attack this turn, which is good. So unless he draws into a mana, he's screwed, which is good for us. So at the moment, my opponent's mana screwed, and that's the way I want it to stay. And he's been replaced with AI, because he's probably mana screwed still, I'm assuming. Yes, he is. So, uh... Okay, so he's got a fiery impulse, but didn't use it. So he just, he just decided to just outright quit. Okay, let's play out a Hinterland Harbour here. Okay, so yeah, now, now the lag's gone, which is good. So, uh... That's one bonus of him leaving, is that we're now completely lag-free. See, thankfully, our uh, Lumbering Falls is hexproof, so the only thing this can be destroyed by is, um his um, creatures that he plays potentially, so at the moment my opponent is still mana screwed, which is good for us. Thankfully we have the uh, the Lumbering Falls to keep us in the game at this point. Okay, so we probably want to play out Elvis Visionary this turn. So we're going to play out Forest. Um, do we play? No, we're going to we're have to keep it the aggression here. So I won't be able to scatter the winds if he plays anything big this turn, but I will be able to however, play out the Elvis Visionary, so... I love the way, even though you've, like, turned this into an elemental, you can still use it as mana with, like, wild size. It would, like, tap it down and make it completely useless. So we're just going to play out the uh, the good old Elvis Visionary here. Draw us a card. We're going down to nine already. We've got so much mana here. This is crazy. So he's up to five mana now, which makes me a little bit more terrifying. Uh, and he's played Outland Colossus. Of course he has. So we need something good here. We could have done with being able to counter that. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. We've got Bounding Crasis, which is good for us. So, oh my god, what I should have done there was tapped it using the Bounding Crasis, then Skyline cascaded it, but, eh, whatever. We'll keep open the, uh, the Elvis Visionary and the Blocker and Skyline cascade it next turn. We'll just tap you down. Oops, it. 
So what we'll do is do this quick now before we declare attackers. There we go. So we can actually now swing with the uh, with the three three. Save you open as a blocker for the uh, what's it called outline colossus. Push through the three damage. That was almost a very very bad idea. So he's probably going to swing with this. So now I might even let it go through just so I can save a blocker. No, he decided not to do that. That's not good for us. And he's now got a Kurd Chieftain. So what do we do here then? What do we do here then? Okay, we've got uh, another Bounding Crisis, which is good for us. So that means we can then tap down the 6-6. Six, six. Oh, I think we've just won here. Reason being is if we do that, we'll tap you down. We'll then activate the Lumbering Falls. Nope, we can't actually do wild size. Crap. Um, I'm going to have to swing with everything here and just pray that um, I can then push through the last bit of damage with wild size next turn. So he's probably going to block one of my three threes. I'm assuming maybe the land. Nope, not the land. So we push through four damage there. So we've got the wild size for next turn. So if we swing with everything next turn, we should win. So he's not played anything out here. Nobody's played that as Endicar Incarnate. So this is fine for us because we've got three creatures and the ability to push through two damage with one of them. So I'm quite happy with this. And we had the Disperse open as well. So few. So basically he could block both of the big creatures here and then we just wild size to finish him off. So we swing with all. Wait to see what we need to wild size. And then we just wild size the Elvis Visionary. Okay, cool. So that is a win for game number one. Thank God for that. Goodbye, Mr. Dav. So uh, let's move on to game number two. Okay, guys, here we are for game number two. So uh, I missed who we, were who, who we were playing, but I'll find that out in a second. I'm going to keep this hand, mostly because we've got the two Mist Intruders and the two mana. So uh, we're playing the rank 19 Cracknell. Thankfully, we're up to rank 21 now. So uh, start building my rank back up a little bit. I'm undecided about what to do for the... Uh, for next week's Friday Night Magic, I was thinking maybe just like an aggressive deck, something like uh, Red White Allies. So I've done like the, um, what's it called? Red, White and Green, but I'm thinking of just doing like Red and White and making it as aggressive as possible. So it could be quite interesting. So we could really do with that third mana so we can start playing things like the Bounding Crisis and the Frost Links. Not really too concerned about Perilous Mirror, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, are we going to get a third mana? No, we are not. So we're just going to play out another Mist Intruder here. Swing with the uh, Mist Intruder. And then just play out another one. We're going to ingest a card from him. Oh, yes. Goodbye, Nissa. You're in the exile pile. And then we'll just play out the second Mist Intruder and hope that we get that third mana next turn so we can start playing out Bounding Crisis, Frost Link. So we obviously need four mana for Separatist Void Mage, but we're not getting that anytime soon. And he's just going to swing with the uh, with his 1-1, his one, one, uh, which we're just going to skip blocking. As I'd rather, you know, keep both of my uh, Mist Intruders alive. And he's got nothing to play this turn. Third mana? Nope, because, you know, the game hates us. So we are completely mana screwed and he's played Natural Connection so he can ramp up a bit. So I wonder if we're playing like Green Black Ramp maybe? Could be interesting. So we're just going to keep picking away with the Mist Intruder cards. Hopefully we can mill some good things. So we got rid of Blister Pod and we got rid of Olamog. Yes! Olamog's in the exile pile. I call that a result. At least I've not got that to worry about for the rest of the game now. I bet he's just gone full on Sad Panda because that was two cards from the top as well. I'm sorry, mate. You've no longer got an Olamog. And he's going to play out a Blister Pod. So, third mana would be nice here. Come on. We've also got, like, Wild Size, which we could use on these guys as well, so... Mana, 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 mana. Come on. Yes, there we go. Run away, guys. Run away. So, um... I'm probably just going to swing with, like, both of these. And then maybe just play out Bounding Crisis on... Um, so he's going to... I'm going to deal two damage and ingest two cards again. I'm going to flash in the Bounding Crisis, I think. So, yep, that's a Monvuli Acid Moss gone as well. So he's going to get a Scion. So he's up to one, two, three, four, five, six mana. 
So he's going to play Guardian of Melitus. That's fine by me. What we're going to do now is just flash him Bounding Crisis and tap down one of his creatures. So tap down the Perilous Mirror. Tap you down. So it just it remains tapped for his whole turn now. I highly doubt he's going to... He might swing with the Blister Pod. Yeah, he's going to swing with the Blister Pod. We're not going to destroy that. It's only one damage. And basically, I don't want to give him the extra mana for playing uh, big creatures. So I almost want to... If I had a second blue mana, I'd almost want to keep open Scatter to the Winds. Although we have just found Lumbering Falls, which is nice for us. So what I might do here is tap down the 06 with the Frost Links. We can't counter anything this turn anyway, so we may as well kind of be as aggressive as possible. Swing with all, all, all three of our creatures here. This could be something huge, and he could be ready to play it, but we do have Separatist Void Mage to bounce it, and a or a Scatter to the Winds, maybe potentially to counter it as well. So we're going to get rid of an Oblivion Sower, which is making me extremely happy. Okay, it seems like the deck's working well today. It's ticking over. You know, we're getting the cards we need. So uh, yeah, we just got to keep we just got to keep this up. So Reeve Soul. So I'm guessing he's going to Reeve Soul one of my flyers. Yep. So now he's all tapped out, and I know he's got no big creatures open, so this is the point where I could potentially just keep open, scatter to the winds every turn, and just keep picking at his, um, picking at his health, basically. Okay, so we've got ourselves an Elvish Visionary, so I'm just going to swing with the 1-2. Like so. Is that 2 mana? That is 2 mana. I mean, in theory, I could displacement wave a lot of things but i'm just gonna hold open the scatter to the winds just in case he pulls like i don't know some kind of crazy like eldrazi or something this turn nope he's just gonna find a mana so that's fine by me nothing to worry about we could really do with another mana here so we can play out elvish visionary and keep hold oh we've got will breaker need that extra mana though don't we so i'm just gonna swing with the one two see what happens yeah we could really do a will breaker here coming down so what's he gonna do uh, he's gonna play out the from beyond so we definitely want to keep open scatter to the winds now because he's going to find my guess would be desolation twin as our next best guess I'm hoping it's not desolate is desolation twin great so at least we can counter it which is good so it's gonna hold open scatter to the winds here He's going to play Desolation Twin. It's going to create a 10 10 token, which we can then just simply bounce with Separatist Void Mage. Rot Shambler, don't really care too much for. He's going to play out Desolation Twin here. No, he's not, because he knows I've got a counter. Excellent. So we can play out Elvish Visionary here, which we want to do with just the green mana, just so we draw an extra card. Keep open Scatter to the Winds as well. Excellent, we've got a second scatter to the winds, which makes me very happy. And we're just going to keep picking away his health with the 1 2. We can potentially get down Willbreaker at some point, but uh, not until he's played out Desolation Twin and we've sorted that out. So yeah, I've got two counters, which is nice. So like I said, we're just we've got we've got seven turns to just basically keep picking away his health. So he's going to scatter to the winds you. I mean, like I said, it's going to create another token. Okay, and that Rot Shambler does get um, pumped up as well. But we do potentially have Displacement Wave to deal with you. If it gets too big. Is that whenever a creature gets sent to the graveyard? Whenever a creature control dies? So technically, Desolation Twin didn't... Oh, no, I see. Basically, because... Um, so now we can separate his Void Mage, the other 10-10. So yeah, because he basically sacrificed the, the Scions. Um, there we go. So I've got rid of the 10 cent. And we just keep swinging. Hope he doesn't have another Eldrazi in hand, because otherwise we might then be a little bit screwed. Just keep ingesting him though, so we've got rid of another Rot Shambler. So he's played Jaddy Offshoot. That's fine by me. He's going to gain him some health and play his mana out. And he's played a From Beyond, so no mana for him this turn. What do we got him down to? So we needed to get him down to three health before we can wild size the other Mist Intruder. 
So we know he's got nothing at the moment, and I've got no way of... Uh, I can probably want to keep a counter open, to be fair. So I'm just going to swing with the 1-2. Oh, and then maybe play out like Jesse and Thief. Just hold open the count. 1, 2, 3, 4. Actually, saying that, I can scatter to the winds and... So he's going to find another Eldrazi. So which one's it going to be this time? He's found Breaker of Armies, so we, do it. we know we've got Scatter to the Winds for that one, so... Um, we could play out Jesse and Thief. Or we just basically play out Scatter to the Winds and awaken one of our manners, which I think is probably an even better idea, in my opinion. So he, he gains one health from the Jaddy offshoot. And we're going to Scatter to the Winds, pay six, and we may as well awaken... <laughs> there we go, he's finally given up. So I don't know what he's going to do here then. So I mean we could Displacement Wave 1 which will bounce back both the Jaddy offshoot. Yeah I think what I'm going to do here is Displacement Wave for 1. There we go. This basically bounces back. Um, yeah what's something? Bounces back two of his creatures which then leaves us enough open here to just go for a massive swing. And this should finish him off in theory so we'll see what he blocks. So he's blocked the 3-3, three, three, the 3-3 three, three there, and the 2-2 two, two there. And we've then got 1-2, one, 1-2, two, one, two, 3, 4 going through. Oh crap, I've just realised I've not left enough mana open. Well that was a bit silly of me, wasn't it? So... Things are going to die here. I was a bit too aggressive there, I feel. We have gone down to 2 health though, so basically we just swing with the Mist Intruder and Wild Size it next turn. So I can take 5 damage from the Rot Shambler, I think. So I, bounced, I know what creature cards he's got in hand, and it's basically a Blister Pod and a Jaddy Offshoot and whatever he drew this turn, so providing it's not a Flyer to block my Flyer, we should be okay. Even if that's a land, I don't care because he'd go up to 3, but we... Again, we deal 3 damage with the Mist Intruder, so we're all good. Excellent, that was worth doing that huge swing then, so... We can now go with the 1-2. Pause, wild size, end the game. Fantastic. There we go. Awesome. So it's been a good couple of games. So uh, I think I'll do a third game, guys. So I'll, I'll see you in a sec. Okay, guys. Here we are for the third and final game of today. Um, so we're playing like the rank 25 noob for life, I think it was. This is a great opening hand. We've got Mist Intruder into Banding Crisis into Whirl of Rogue, and then we've got Disperses and all sorts of fun stuff. Yeah, we're playing noob for life, rank 25. So yeah, my luck's going down really well today. Okay, we're playing Simic potentially. Um, probably start off with just an Islander of Forest here. Excellent. We've managed to find Harbinger of Tide, so we've got more bounce. Reminds me of the, uh, who, who did Bounce? It was, uh, I can't remember, it was like Kesha or something like that. It was like Bounce. Do, 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 do. Bounce. That's uh, quite an old song now. I'm sure that came out a while ago. Okay, we've got some lag again as the uh, salvage drone was refusing to come into play. There was like, I want to hover above the battlefield. Like, you do that salvage drone. So we're just going to play out Forest here. And Mist Intruder or Undercity Troll? I prefer Mist Intruder here, just because... It's uh, got the evasion on it, so I wonder if we're playing like Simic, like a Simic Tempo deck or Simic Ramp. Because I know there's been a couple of variants on Simic in Battle for Sender cards, so I'm guessing Simic Ramp at this point. Yeah, I'm glad I decided to go for the Mist Intruder here, just because we can then play out Under City Troll this turn. I haven't quite got the fourth mana for Whirler Rogue yet, which is going to be awesome in a few turns' time. Yeah, I may as well play out the Undercity Troll and then start playing out my kind of like my bouncing, uh, my bouncing and tapping creatures afterwards. Get out my actual um, like attacking creatures first, and then start dealing with the with the bouncing and stuff in a moment. So we swing with a Mist Intruder. Can it be Ulamog, like like one of the top top tier ingests of all time last game? Garden of Tenzin, that sort of works for me too. That's quite a powerful card, so I don't mind that one being exiled pretty much straight away. Let's see what he does. So he's Monvuli Acid Mossing me. Yeah, that's fine. 
you know, I can accept that. We're still at a green source, so go to my dual land, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, we're, we're one... It would be nice to be able to get Whirler Rogue down there, but... I'm, I'm, I'm not going to cry over spilt milk, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, this is looking like Simic, Simic Ramp for my opponent, so he's up to quite a few mana already. We'll play out the island here, and then... So let's play out the Bounding Crisis, maybe, and tap down the Salvage Drone. So I could flash it in, but, you know, tap you down. And then we'll swing with both of these. So we might be forced to sacrifice the uh, Gate Creeper Vine to the Undercity Troll, which would work for me. Which he does decide to do. So the Whirler Rogue is particularly good as it can either give us two flies in the air or be able to force through three damage a turn with the Banning Crasis or the Undercity Troll, for example, which is quite nice. Let's see what he does though. So yeah, he's up to quite a few mana already. He's played Green Warder and Marassa, so basically he gets to bring back, when it enters the battlefield, he gets to bring back a target creature or a, or a target spell. So he's going to bring back Monvuli Acid Moss, which is kind of bad news for me. So I really need a fourth mana to kind of get out Whirler Rogue, like now. Lumbering Falls does not really work, as basically um, I would, would have enjoyed a non-tap land there. So we're just going to swing with the 1-2, I think. Let's push for another point of damage for now. So yeah, I don't see this going too well, this game. Just because um, I know that he's got a Monvuli Acid Moss coming down again, so it's going to destroy my Lumbering Falls. We won't get Whirler Rogue down. So yeah, Monvuli Acid Moss is so going after my uh, yeah Lumbering Falls, which is what I expected. At least it gave him another target apart from my fast land, so it sort of worked for me. And he's going to play out his own Lumbering Falls, okay. Is he going to swing with the 5-4? No, he's going to swing with the 1-1, one, so pff, whatever. Just skip blocking that. Yeah, that's the kind of card that um, could have done with countering, really. So he did ingest me a mana. Oh, crap. That really sucks. I've just realised that. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of annoying. I just realised that um, if I blocked that there, he would have drawn a card, but I would have actually had a mana. So now I feel, now I feel stupid. We are going to ingest him, though. Now, do I play out something like Jesse and Thief here? It's not really much point right now. I may as well hold open something like Disperse instead in case he decides to go for something crazy. So what's he going to do this time? I'm guessing he's going to activate Lumbering Falls. Uh, yes, he's going to activate Lumbering Falls. Okay. So he's going to swing with this one and this one maybe? Just the 1-1? One, one? Okay, interesting. I don't know why you'd... Uh... So I'm going to block with you. In case he's got a wild size, we will hope, hold open the regeneration. So like, he says he draws a card from that, but I don't want to keep risking losing my mana to the exile pile, so... Interesting why he decided to activate Lumbering Falls this turn. I have no idea why he decided to do that at all. If he didn't plan to swing with it, I don't know why he decided to activate it. So that's interesting. We're just picking away his health at the moment. Found Hinterland Harbour, which is good, which means we can now drop Whirler Rogue. We do have Separatist Void Mage as well, but I don't really care too much for that. So what we can now do is uh, make you unblockable. Um, yeah, what do we make? What do we make unblockable? Undercity Troll, I think. So we'll tap down both of them. Then we'll swing with. What's he gonna do? What's he got? He obviously wants to do something here. Because this is going to allow us to get through damage much faster now. So he's got his own bounding crisis. Okay, interesting. He's going to tap down my under control. That's fine. So we're we'll just swing with the 1-2 now. Keep picking away at his health. So at least we've forced out a uh, bounding crisis out of him now. 
wondering what he's going to do this turn. So he's kind of like, he's depleted his hand quite a lot. And we can play out things like Jesse and Thief now. We've got the World of Road down and actually start to like kind of use this to uh, draw cards every turn as well. So we can play this and the Mist Intruder and make sure we guarantee a card, card draw every turn with that. Could do with a decent block for the 5-4, but uh, I'm not going to complain. If I get Willbreaker soon, Willbreaker and another mana, and we're basically laughing our way to the bank. So we can then just control any of his creatures. Because we've already got the Whirl of Rogue in play, we know that we can basically control anything that he throws on the battlefield. But we do need that fifth mana to make... Um, so he decided not to swing, which is interesting. So I wonder what he's, got, I wonder what he's holding open. So... Um... Scarlet Cascade is nice. I almost want to play it now just so that, you know, I'm just going to swing with you. Hold open everything else, I think. Maybe should have swung with the 1-1s. So it's going to ingest him again. We kind of need this down, so I'm going to play it now. It doesn't really matter too much. I know it's kind of a waste, but I do need that fifth mana in case we do get Willbreaker. We'll hold open Disperses in case he plays something crazy big. Yeah, because if we get Willbreaker, it's basically game over at this point. Because I can start, like I said, picking off his... Uh, okay, he's found Guardian of Tenzin. So we're just going to Disperse it. Is it worth Dispersing? I think it is. Because he can't replay it this turn. So, uh... So, yeah, why not? We'll, we'll Disperse it. Just, just to drive him up the wall. So, yeah, okay, maybe you can replay it. Oh, yes, because he's got the Lumbering Falls as well, hasn't he? So, uh, I might just Void Mage it again. Just just to be kind of really quite funny. Yeah, we're really looking for that Will Breaker right now. So, um... Do I play out Separatist Void Mage or do I play Jesse and Thief? No, I think I'm going to play out Separatist Void Mage here. It will push through the three damage. There we go. And then we'll just swing with the, um... Three Flyers. Perfect. Marvellous. So we're also going to ingest him one. I just realised we managed to get rid of his Disciple of the Ring, which makes me quite happy. We'll hold open Harbinger of Tides for when he potentially swings with the... whatever it's called, the Flyer. So if he plays it, swings with it, we can then bounce it using Harbinger of Tides. So if we find Willbreaker, you know, it's game over. I think I've got one or two of them in the deck. Can't quite remember off the top of my head. Would be nice to find it. We almost need, really need to play Jesse and Thief just so we can, like, guarantee that. So he's going to play the Guardian of Tent to team. So we can't really swing with our uh, Flyers this turn. So I may as well make something unblockable instead. Um... Play out Jess no, could we play out Jesse and Thief? Not really. Um, we can play Outland Colossus though. Ooh, ooh, that is a potential game winner. So I'm gonna make um, I don't know. You unblockable for the turn. And then we're gonna swing with the Bannon Crasis. Like so. Deal three damage. And then we're going to play Outland Colossus. Just because we need to have this down, basically. It's, it's a game winner. So what's he got? Has he got a counter? Oh, he's got a counter. That makes me a bit sad, Panda. That's fine. We, we can do it without the, um, without the Outland Colossus. It was one of our game winners. At least we managed to get rid of a Scatter to the Winds as well. Which is pretty good. Okay, so what's he played? Drowner of Hope, enter the battlefield, put two 1-1 one, one colorless Eldrazi Sion tokens, and then sacrifice an Eldrazi Sion token, you can tap target creature. Okay, so we can tap two of my creatures. It's fair enough. Is he going to swing with the 4-5 flyer? That is the question. So this is, uh, this is nice and tense now. This is good. I thought I was going to like lose this, but my opponent's been far too tame in my opinion. I mean, if he'd swung with Green Warden of Marassa a few times, he might have whittled down my, my board a bit more, but I'm, I'm in quite a strong position because of it. 
Do you attack at all? I mean, if he, if he attacks with, say, for example, the Garden of Tazim, we can bounce it back again using the Harbing Harbinger of Tides. This is getting tense. Like, I'm getting very, very close here to... It's, okay, so he's swinging with the Green Warden. We probably just let that go through this turn, as we can afford to. Because in future, I could potentially save open three mana for the Undercity Troll. I wonder if that's another counter, three mana counter. Interesting. We do have Separatist Void Mage again, so yeah, why the hell not? We'll Separatist Void Mage the 4-5 again. Come on! What's he, has he actually got a counter? Is this where, is this where this is going? Nope, he's not, he's not to counter, so he's going to bounce you. Now what's he going to do? He's going to tap down my 1-2 maybe? Using the um, the Drowner of Hope. And then we're just going to swing with, uh, I don't know, 1, 2, 3. I mean, they're already tapped now, so we can't tap them down with his Drowner of Hope, so... So we push through three more damage there. And then we just roll on. So he's got, we've got him down to five. Which is nice, I suppose. I mean, this Drowner of Hope is pretty terrifying, but... So I'm just trying to figure out how many, how many creatures he got. One, two... So he's got a Guardian of Tazim. He might swing with something this time, which we could potentially bounce back on my turn. I've just got to figure out, like, if I can, like, go for a huge swing, maybe. So we got... So say, for example, he swings with... Say, say for example, he swings with Green Warden this turn. Uh, we bounce it back. I'd leave him with one, two, three, four, five creatures. Um, and we could then push through potentially um, one, two... So we, we, we that would leave us with so one, two, three, four, five. That would leave us with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, even if we were to block, say, for example, one, two, three, four, five. Now, that wouldn't be enough to quite push through lethal damage, unfortunately, unless we were to grab a wild size on our next draw. And he's going to Monvuli Acid Moss me, which, at this point of the game, don't really care. You know, I've, I've got enough mana to play everything that I need to still. So, what is... Uh, that taps down a creature, I believe, the Garden of Tazim. So, yeah, he's going to tap down my Bounding Crasis. Just wondering what he's going to do. Is he going to swing with things? Going to go for a big swing, or is he going to... Play it safe. He's going to swing with the Green Warden. Okay. So I think we let that go through as we can afford to take that 5 damage. So we skip blocking, let that go through. We go down to 9. Now, if we top deck um, Monvuli Acid Moss, uh, not Monvuli Acid Moss, Wild Size with 1 from my calculations. No, we do get a Disperse. So. Say, for example, I could disperse Drowner of Hope. And then, would that help at all? I could then make, for example, Bounding Crasis unblockable. Uh, it doesn't really do enough damage, though, I'm going to be honest. Could disperse the 4 5. Yeah, that might be the best, best thing here is disperse you. What's he got now? You've got one mana open. Surely you can't do anything to counter that unless it's um, the spell which counters only instants. So we're going to take him down to... He can't have anything else. Is he just like trolling me now because he knows I've basically won at this point? I think this guy's just being an ass. You know, I think because we're going to deal three damage here which takes him down to two. And even if he replays Garden of Tazim, we then still have three flying damage to push through next turn. So I think this wins the game for us, basically. Clutch, disperse, top deck. Dealing with the Guardian of Tazim. Has he got Royal Spout in this deck? No, it's Clutch of Current. So, uh, return target creature to its owner's hand. Yeah, so he could have, like, bounced, for example, like, one of my Thopters. But I think, unless he gets something Clutch here, I think I might have just won. I mean, he could tap down both of my Thopters here, but that would then get in Sacrifice... The Eldrazi Scions, and then that would leave us open for a massive swing with everything else instead. 
He's going to play. And this is ah, oh, this is renewal. You are joking. So he's back up to nine health here, and he gets to refill his hand as well. So he gets to basically tap down three of my creatures. And what's he going to do now? So we've got two blockers available, so we can stay in. Oh no, I've lost. Oh, that was clutch, that bloody Nissa's Renewal. If he top deck that, that is the top deck of all top decks. Because basically that, I think he must have top decked that. He surely must have done because he was down and out there. And I would have won if it hadn't been for that Nissa's, Re Nissa's Revelation. That really annoying. Well, he won the tactical battle. It was Simic versus Simic and his Simic deck won. So that's a shame. GG, mate, GG. I'll, I'll give him that. Okay, so uh, we had, we, that was a fun episode. Like, I mean, I, I enjoyed winning the first two, and this was a fun match. Even though I lost, this guy, it was it was very close. It could have gone either way. Like, it could have, yeah. If we'd found, I don't know, uh, one of those, what was it called? A wild size, we might have won anyway, but hey, hope. Uh, and that's the end of the episode for now. And that's also the end of the uh, Simic Tempo. So like I said, I might go for like an aggressive... Um, like allies deck next week so i'm looking forward to doing that so uh, as always guys don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode and i'll see you next time goodbye